My name is Rick Robinson. I'm the uh, marketing guy at Vision Research, and I'd like to talk to you today a little about our newest camera. It's called the Phantom Miro M320S. Uh, this is it. It's a small, compact camera capable of HD uh, video recording. You can do 1920 by 1080 at about 1500 frames per second, for example. The camera body itself weighs about three pounds, so it's considerably lighter than previous generation of Phantom cameras. It can be battery powered uh, by a Sony BPU series battery. This is a 30. It would give it about 45 minutes of record time. If you put a BPU 60 on, you can probably go close to uh, an hour and a half of, uh, of untethered recording. Um, a couple of neat things about this camera. You can choose one of four different lens mounts. I think the most popular is likely to be the EF mount, uh, allowing you to use Canon lenses and uh, control them automatically, doing focus uh, and aperture control. You can also put a PL on it. I think this one has a, you know, this one does have a, a PL mount on it, so you can use cinema style lenses with the camera. It does have a 35 millimeter sized uh, sensor inside. Um, we've got it hooked up to our remote control unit here, so that again you could take this completely untethered from AC power and 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 you know using the remote control unit on battery and the camera on battery. The remote control unit gives you a full. Uh, capability for setting up the camera, setting up things like resolutions, frame rates, exposure. You can acquire uh, the images by triggering from the remote control unit. Once you've triggered on the remote control unit, then you can um, go into uh, playback modes and control the playback of the of the movie that you just took. Another cool feature of this camera is what we call our Cine Flash technology. Let me rotate it around so that you can see that. Uh, you can shoot into the camera memory at very high speeds, and we can have up to 12 gigabytes of memory in the camera. If you get a take that you really like and you want to save it for later offline processing, it's very simple. You can just, uh, I'm not good at this left-handed, but you can open that door and pull out uh, a very compact storage media called a Cine Flash. If you're familiar with our other cameras, like the Flex, they have a Cine Mag. Cine Mag's faster, and it has higher capacity than this. But for this camera, this size and the and the speed the speed at which we can save is very you know adequate. This is a 60 gig Cine Flash. They come in 120 gig and 240 gig as well. They're hot swappable, so if you fill one up, you can pull it out, put another one in, and, and keep shooting. At the end of the day, if you want to see what you've shot and process it on your computer, this Cine Flash plugs into a small docking station. We'll get a shot of it in a minute. And uh, the docking station connects to a PC or a Mac via an eSATA connection. And it are, those are files that are on there that will be mounted on the computer then. And you can just drag and drop them onto the computer and continue to work with them from there. The camera has an HDSDI output. So if you do prefer to use some kind of a video workflow, once you've got the shot captured into the camera memory, you can play it out of the camera memory over the HDSDI video. You can use this for monitoring, of course, but you can also use it uh, to connect to an external uh, recorder. The handle mount that we have on the top is actually a, not a product of Vision Research. It comes from Able CineTech, and in fact, they've outfitted these cameras with a variety of different accessories that I think people are going to find uh, quite exciting when they're using a camera of this physical size. Sure, it differs from the Flex in several significant ways. I mean, obviously one big difference is the physical size of the camera. And with the shrinking of the camera, we had to shrink some of the performance and some of the feature set as well. Uh, one of the big differences is the amount of internal memory that's available. This can go to a maximum of 12 gigabytes. That'll give you about three and a half seconds of recording at HD at 1,000 frames per second, for example. And that's good. That's good for one or two takes into the camera memory. After that, you'd need to save it and then flush the memory and go to your next take. On a Flex, you can have up to 32 gigabytes of memory. And so you can do a lot more back-to-back -back shooting with the Flex than you could with this. So if you're in an environment where taking shot after shot after shot is very important, uh, the, the cost of the shots, the crew that may be around or whatever, you know, you really need high productivity. That's going to be a better camera for you. 
the Flex has an HQ mode, which we do a black reference on every frame to ensure the lowest possible noise floor. This does not have the HQ mode. The uh, quality of this camera, though, will be about equivalent to what the Flex is when it's shooting in standard mode. Another big difference between this and the Flex is the CineMag interface that's available on the Flex. While we have the Cine Flash here, you know, it, it's smaller in size, first of all. You know, the CineMags can be up to 512 gigabytes. You can record directly to a CineMag on a Flex at up to 400, 450 frames a second at HD. That way you can get very long record times, minutes if you need them. Uh, on this, you cannot record directly to the Cine Flash. You record only into the camera memory, and after you've got your shot, then you can save it to the Cine Flash. On the Flex, if you do that same use model, you can save it to the Cine Mag in a matter of seconds, where here, the speed to saving to the Cine Flash is a bit slower, although still quite fast. It takes about a minute to save four gigabytes. So if you had a 12 gigabyte shot, you'd need two and a half, three minutes to save it to the Cine Flash. Then you'd be ready to go ahead with your next shot. So that's, that's another big difference. Uh, the, there's other smaller differences, maybe big to some people. There's a dual video output on the Flex so that you do have dual link uh, HD, SDI so that you can uh, gang those together for 444 video or have two independent outputs, maybe one going to a monitor and another one uh, going to a viewfinder or a remote control device or something like that. The Flex has uh, a genlock capability for gen, gen locking the video output. This doesn't, you'd have to use an external genlock. So there's a lot of things in the electronics of the Flex that aren't available in this primarily due to the, uh, the form factor. Those are the, the biggest differences. I think uh, the Flex is still uh, positioned as the pro camera, um, and this is being introduced to uh, provide an alternative to the Flex at a more approachable price point and uh, maybe open up the phantom cameras to people who previously couldn't, couldn't acquire one.